Bueno, esta tarde el tema que, que nos ocupa, se nota en, la, en el título, son recursos en línea y programas colaborativos internacionales. Hemos visto esta, esta mañana un, con el, el último ejemplo de, del Museo de Prehistoria de Valencia, Hemos visto eh, diferentes palabras enseñando que están reflexionando sobre una gestión local, la del, del museo, pero con un espíritu muy abierto al internacional. Entonces, esta tarde tendremos aquí proyectos colaborativos al nivel internacional. Eh, comenzamos por con una estructura, una estructura participativa, me parece, con diferentes equipos internacionales, con un comité, un comité de, de, de cuántas, cuántas personas, dentro una, 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 una decena de, de personas, y David Wigwolf, eh, que está aquí, eh, representa de una cierta manera este, este comité de no misma. Hemos hablado de, de eso esta mañana. David está en el Gemisch uh, Germanische Commission des Deutschen Archäologischen Institut en eh, Frankfurt. Y trabaja en dos extremos de la numismática. Eh, yo lo conocía como una persona que se dedica a la moneda celta, pero también tiene otro otro ventaja un poquito de como uno misma trabaja también en la antigüedad tardía y me parece que en este momento trabaja más en este, en este campo. Entonces, eh, le, le cedo la, la palabra para presentar esta superestructura eh, numismática. Thank you very much, Laurent, and I would like to say thank you to the organizers, to Paloma Perpao, and Charles for organizing the event and for inviting me. And I would like to apologize for speaking English, but I'm afraid I have no Spanish, so this is much better. I will try to speak slowly and clearly, and please, if you can't understand or hear me at the back, then do let me know. I, can, I can't do anything about the quality, but I can improve the quantity. So um, I would like to talk today, as Laurent had said, mainly about the nomisma.org project, um, but I would also like to explain a little bit about how it works. Some of this will be very simple. The technicians can quietly sleep after lunch. Um, I will try to explain what it's all about. Um, some of you know the mug from Tim Berners-Lee explaining five-star lim linked open data, which is what this is all about. It's about how to get websites to link with each other So you get one star just for being on the web. You get two stars if uh, a machine can read it. So if you have text or a table rather than just a picture. You get three stars if you don't like Bill Gates but go for open source software, which people don't have to buy a license for. You get four stars if you then put your data on according to particular standards which are laid down by the World Wide Web Consortium and you then get five stars if you then link your data to other peoples. And this is really what Nomisma is about. It's about providing the infrastructure to allow you to link your data with other peoples. This is the homepage of Nomisma. You've seen it on some of the presentations so far. Here we have the, the steering committee, for example, but here you can see the institutions who are contributing to Nomisma and making this possible. So this is a truly international uh, project. Um, this is where it gets dangerous because I'm going to try and do a live demonstration. If it doesn't work, though, I've got a video I can show you. Now, the idea about nomisma is, is that it defines concepts within numismatics in a way that machines can read it. So, something very simple. For example, let's take a denarius. 
There are, of course, many types of denarius, but let's come to the very, very simple Roman denarius. We've seen the concept of a URI before. Today, this is the idea of a unique web address which points people at a denarius. So if on your database you want to call a denarius a strawberry, you can. As long as you say, when I say strawberry, I mean denarius, everybody knows what you're talking about. So this sticks things together. And the NISMA site gives you various languages to write a denarius, but it also links the idea of a denarius through to other resources. For example, here an example from the Getty vocabulary when Getty talks about a denarius, again with a Getty link here. So we all know we're talking about the same thing. Um, we could take, for example, um, well, something very simple, for example, the mint at Rome. Again, names in various languages and links through to other resources, in this case, for example, through to the British Museum, definition of Rome, this in this case in machine-readable form, nothing terribly human, humanly readable. And finally, another example, Augustus, the Roman Emperor Augustus. Um, again, he has an ID, a URI, a unique web address, so we know we're talking about Augustus. Here we're starting to see some of the things you can do, a heat map of um, coins of Augustus in coin hoards. We'll come and see that later. But again, it's linked through to other resources as well. In this case, for example, let me bring up the link through to the Bibliothèque Nationale in Paris. So by pointing to other resources, we can link everything together. That's the idea, but how does it work, for example? Um, no, wrong website. Where are we going to... Yeah. Let us start with... This is the project we've seen before, OCA, Online Coins of the Roman Empire. Manuel presented this um, earlier on with his coins, which are now contributing to this web resource. Um, and he pointed out that every particular type of coin uh, within the RIC corpus has its own unique web address, so you can point at this coin type. And here we have an entry for RIC 100 for Augustus with a description of the coin, and any of these will link through to the relevant nomisma um, definition, for example, of the mint. And we're now getting examples of this coin from, in this case, Berlin and the British Museum. We'll see more later. But here we're starting to get a map of finds, and this one is a hoard from Bourgueil on the, well, yes, on the, on the Loire in France. Now, if I click on this, this is going to bring me up, if the server, yes, the server's up and running, this has a unique web address, and we're now at a different resource. We are now on the project Coin Hordes of the Roman Republic online. So this is a new website, which I have been taken into purely by a web address, which links me in. So I'm now on um, the hoard from Bourgueil. And um, if I scroll down here, I get a list of all the coins which are coming up all the coin types from that hoard, and I'm looking for a particular one. For example, here, Crawford 362 slash 1. And I'm now on yet another project, Coinage of the Roman Republic Online, which is Michael Crawford's work presented on the web. Um, and if I come down through here, I get a description of the coin, like the online coins of the Roman Empire, and now we're pulling examples of the coin from a whole load of um, resources. The American Numismatic Society, this is a much more common coin type. The coin cabinet in Berlin. The portable antiquity scheme in London, so finds of coins made by private people. But also the British Museum collection is in here. 
but it's also bringing up some rather more um, obscure collections you wouldn't normally look at. The Classical Museum of the University College of Dublin, the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts. And if I link on that, for example, that will bring up the coin again because it points at a unique web address. So this is, as Manuel, as you were really sort of saying, this is a good way for smaller collections to present their material online because I would never go and search the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts for a Roman coin, if I'm honest. But it's coming up, it's um, presenting your data online. The text behind this is stored on the server at New York, but every single one of these pictures has been pulled up live in the moment I clicked. So the websites are getting traffic as I pull this in, even if people don't look at your coin. Now, Ethan Gruber, the programmer, has done some very nice things as well, linking together these websites. This is a map of hordes with this coin type, and it's combined with a timeline. So if I come through here, and I can get this, no, wrong side, sorry. No, I was right. I can never get this to work properly. But as we come through, if I'm going to be very lucky, it's going to start... No, it's not doing it. We'll refresh the picture. I'm not very good at this, I'm afraid. You can see it's starting to move, and we're getting a nice picture of different hordes coming up at different times. And so you're starting to see the distribution of the coin over time. You can imagine the thought of things that are going on. Um, I'm not getting to the one I want to be at. But if I'm a little bit patient and I get the keyboard out of the way, with any luck, any minute now, the one I want is going to appear. No, it's not going to. You have to be patient. Where is it gone? Okay. I think I'll have to give up on this. Ah, there it is. So we come back to Bourgoy, the horde of Bourgoy, again, clicking back through the coin types. And then, if I pull down, I can come back again to Augustus 100, which is where we started. And the nice thing about that is I did it without using the keyboard. Everything just clicks through by links from website to website. That is basically all there is to the whole thing. Um, this will, we've seen a little bit about how this will take you in to other websites as well. But for example, let me pull up a particular coin type, Vespasian 777. Again, we're getting a description of the coin type and some examples of the coin, and we're getting some of... This is purely by chance. This is the coin I always use, and it so happens that you have lots of examples in your hoard on the web. But I'm afraid I'm going to disappoint you because I'm going to actually use a hoard, a, a coin from the project I work on, which is the coin finds from Germany. And this links through to my website. Now, I'm going to explain this a little later. The tech people will understand what this is about. This is RDF. But this then links me through to my website. This is basically the coin then online. Uh, we talked a lot about photographs. These are actually scanned in old prints of photos. The coins are no longer accessible. So those people who are smiling in front row. Um, now, somewhere one of these is actually going to be the, yeah. This should be the version of the coin is it going to do this? Oh, it's logged me out already. Excuse me a minute. I logged in earlier on, but the timeout has knocked me out. Okay. Um, so what I'd like to do is show you the back end of the website because um, the, the back end produces more... Um, information, and this is our coin here. Um, now, uh, the whole thing, the link 
runs everything obviously through Nomisma, again, because we're linking to the denarius, we can actually do this. But we can also link through to a lot of other resources which are very, very useful. For example, if I link, click on the find spot of this hoard, I then come to the page on my website with details of this hoard, with a bibliography, with some little information about it, but I'm linking the find spot through to a very different resource run by the German Archaeological Institute, the Gazetteer, which is geographical information on something. Now, Wetzlar Niedergirma is, is a village in central Germany, which is not very exciting. Um, if I pulled up Ephesus or Tarako, I would be getting something very different. But what is nice is that the Gazetteer is linked through to other resources, for example, GeoNames, which has to be one of the standard international geographical systems. So, again, I can reference his GeoNames and everybody knows what I'm talking about. But also, the Gazetteer is linked through to the bibliography of all the libraries of the German Archaeological Institute. So, with one click, I am getting a bibliography on this site. Now, it, obviously, there's not a great deal coming up from this site, but it does happen to include, for example, the publication of the hoard, which tells you also which, well, you can go and read it in Madrid if you want, in the German Institute. Um, so this is a very powerful way of pulling together information. And again, I just started out from that Vespasian 777, and I now have pulled automatically on the web a bibliography about the site. Um, now, that is one aspect of Numisma I'd like to show you. This is just linking by pointing at websites. This is just apple, strawberry, pear. Now, those, it's a, that's a very simple language. But if I want to take a beautiful lady out to dinner and say, me, you, dinner, do I want to take her out or do I want to eat her? This is the question. So I need not just a vocabulary, I also need a, some grammar which sticks together those words. I would like to take you out to dinner. Well, I might want to eat her, but that's another matter. So what this needs is an ontology which explains how these concepts fit together. Um, and Nomisma also has an ontology. You can go and look at it at this web address. This is a very simple ontology built by numismatists so that you can express numismatic sentences and grammar. We have classes, we have properties, has denomination, has iconography, has issuer. This is a very simple uh, ontology. And for those of you who are more interested in other ontologies, we are uh, in contact with the Sidoc CRM group of the Ariadne Project they are starting to adopt Nomisma within their own uh, uh, concepts. So we are now managing to link Nomisma into the broader world, um, which will make it a very useful tool. Now, with the ontology, I can then convert things whoops, into computer-readable language. Some of you will know RDF, Resource Description Framework. Now, a computer can read this. It basically says this coin this was the coin of Vespasian we saw earlier, has the denomination, so NMO is the Numisma ontology. Your browser understands what NMO means, and it is a denarius as defined by the Numisma uh, URI. So this is really RDF. This is a very simple way. The nice thing is you get away from a relational database which is just bits of tables and numbers pulled together, to a way of describing a coin where the computer thinks like we do. We're actually training computers to think like humans when we do this. Um, so I showed this a little earlier on. This was the green screen that came up when I came into our database. And this is RDF explaining the coin. OK, so this is the website, what it looks like. Um, this is for humans, and this is for computers, and it says this coin has the authority of Vespasian. It has the denomination of denarius. Its starting date is 75. Its end date is 75. Its find spot is 
131 in our database, which is Fetzlein Niedergimmers. So this is, this is what the computer sees when it reads RDF, and we can understand it as well. So it's a very simple, easy way. Now, the wonderful thing about it is, okay, again, and it links through, for example, to um, it, the coin type is identified through the link to OCA. So to get, what do you do to get to RDF? And I'll explain why RDF is useful in just a minute. You start off with your relational database, and you map it to the concepts of Nomisma, to RDF. Um, the beauty of this is it does not matter what the structure of your database is like. Nobody has to change their database. You can take almost any database at all, and if you have a good IT specialist who can do the mapping, he can map it to RDF as understandable using Nomisma. And this means we can do wonderful things we can pull together all sorts of different databases and search them through one screen, our RDF, and pull all of these things together. And um, we're testing this on, this is the project I work on in Frankfurt, Antique Fundments in Europa, Ancient Coin Finds in Europe, and we are working on using RDF and this query language which came up on one of the um, uh, the, the PowerPoint shots earlier on, Sparkle. This is a language for querying, for asking questions of RDF. And I, we have a little um, Sparkle endpoint, as it's called. I forgot what the Spanish was. I wrote down the Spanish for Sparkle endpoint earlier on, but I've forgotten it already. And I think I'm going to have to, yes, I'm going to have to leave this in order to, to show you the... Um, Show, I've, I've got a little video here showing how, how the sparkle will work. So, um, as I say, this is how we query different databases. Actually, this is a bit of a cheat because this is running on two databases which are very similar. But it's going to query databases in um, Frankfurt and Poland. Uh, we work together with Polish people, so we have a, a little front end which allows you to type in a query. But here I've... Um, like a cookery show where you cook something beforehand and then show it. Um, so this is asking for coins of Vespasian struck between 68 and 76 at these two databases. And so the query's gone out, and this is the result coming up, and we're now getting a list of coins on these two databases coming up together. So as I say, we've gone into two different databases with this query, and... How does this all work? Well, it basically works because the databases, as I say, are mapped to Nomisma, so it knows the Mint at Rome because it's being given the Nomisma ID for the Mint at Rome. It knows it's a denarius because it's being given the Nomisma ID for a denarius. So this is the glue that sticks this all together. It makes the search possible. And if we come back... Again, we can look at the coin. This is the coin we've seen from our database in machine-readable form from, uh, from our database. Okay, I think we'll cut that because I'm talking pretty much too long, as ever. So basically, I hope I've shown you with these two examples, one, how Nomisma, through this very simple linked open data concept of pointing at other websites, can link all sorts of things together. Now, we've only shown coins, but you can pull it, link it through to anything, really anything you want. The world does not stop. You can carry on clicking forever. And the other point is by using RDF, we have this wonderful possibility of linking into all sorts of different resources. Because one of the problems is we've been trying to link numismatic databases. The first meeting I went to on this was in 1985. And it didn't succeed because in those days it would have meant people had to use the same database. But with the coming of the semantic web, things have changed. People can keep their database. Now, some people have been running databases for 25, 30 years. Bob, when did the ANS database start? It's 1980. So we have a 36-year-old database running in New York. They're not going to change the database so that they can be compatible. But no, they can map their database to RDF, and we can pull all of these 
resources together and access them through one entry screen. The possibilities are amazing. The advantage of the Sparkle access the over Ochre, for example, Ochre will only give you exact coins of an RIC type. If we're dealing with coin finds, if we're looking at archaeology, how many of those coins that you excavate have an exact RIC number? They have a date, maybe. So you can actually then access coins which are not exactly matched to an ochre number. You can access all sorts of things. And this will make things really exciting. At present, we're working together with Amsterdam and with Bern to pull in the Dutch and the Swiss databases into this concept. Uh, and Romania should be going online quite soon. So we start. We hope within a few months to maybe have a spread from the North Sea to the Black Sea um, because Ukraine is involved on the Polish project. So this is a really exciting way of bringing together all sorts of things. And it all comes because of Nomisma, an idea that really Sebastian Heath had. And, but we do have to say thank you to these two people, Ethan Gruber, um, who really likes me for <laughs> showing this photograph. Um, Ethan Gruber is a mad cyclist and he had just done 100 kilometers, so I think he deserved his... Uh, his, his food. Ethan Gruber, who is a fantastic programmer at the University of Virginia, and Carsten Toller from the University of Frankfurt, who models the ontology. And these are the two people who really have made, done the technical work to make this possible. So thank you very much.